what I recall is my first meeting with uh, the general counsel of admirals and generals when I was appointed Minister of Defense of my country. So first of all, for them, you know, to, to see a woman uh, being in charge of the armed forces of a country, you know, I think that they were a little bit terrified. And on my side, I would say more than fear, perhaps a little bit of intimidation. I was intimidated. And I have to say that after two years uh, of collective effort and, and work and strong leadership, we were able to redesign the armed forces in Ecuador. When I was offered, you know, the possibility to run uh, as candidate uh, for president of the United Nations General Assembly, I knew uh, it was, uh, you know, a tough decision uh, to resign, you know, People often do not resign in a position of foreign minister. I decided to run to be the first woman president from Latin America and the Caribbean and the fourth in the United Nations history. The end result was positive because I won the election. Uh, my, my decision of, of uh, you know, giving up my, my, my position as foreign minister, I think that really paid off because I was able not only to serve my country, but to serve the world, uh, to be the president of the Parliament of Humanity, bringing the United Nations closer to the people, uh, work on, on climate change and a global campaign against single-use plastics. Today I'm a candidate, I'm again in a new battle, uh, for the post of Secretary General of the Organization of American States, which means the higher executive position in the hemisphere. Uh, this time and uh, in, I'm in the midst of, of that campaign right now um, and I have the strength, it's not easy, there are two other candidates that are very strong um, but I'm, I'm there and I'm again the, the only woman and uh, if the OAS uh, elects me I would be the first woman Secretary General of the Organization of American States in 71 years of history.